So what is the first Friday? So in the 1700s, Jesus appeared to a nun, a French nun named Margaret Mary. And he revealed to her that um, a lot of people have started to abandon the faith. This was the period just after the French Revolution. Uh, for those who don't know, during that period, uh, a lot of the people put the church in very big suspicion uh, for all their practices. There was this big movement towards atheism. Uh, so what does Jesus do to counteract that? He appears to Margaret Mary, established the sacred heart of Jesus, uh, presents to her the image, the very famous heart of Jesus image. So there's two people that are confused between Divine Mercy. Divine Mercy is from St. Festina. The image with the two rays, one pale, one blue. The sacred heart is the, the beautiful face of Jesus, his upper body, and the heart on fire. And he explains to her and he speaks to her about his heart. Uh, the crown of thorns around his heart represent the ingratitude of men. Um, <clears throat> how they're ungrateful. And also there's nine thorns or nine, uh, there's a few things rather. Um, yes, there are nine things that Jesus says to her, need, people need to make reparation for. So those are how the, how the devotion came about. And also the nine months, the nine first Fridays, represent those nine thorns that affect the heart of Jesus. So souls living in mortal sin, souls who are ungrateful, um, the souls in purgatory, the souls of the religious who are not living out their vocation, and there's a couple others. But what did Jesus ask St. Margaret Mary from that? He said, to make reparation to my heart, go to Mass, go to, so receive communion on the first Fridays of nine consecutive months. So every first Friday of the month, um, he asked for to receive communion, to go to confession. So confession uh, can be done seven days prior or seven days after uh, the actual first Friday, but communion must be received on the day. Um, and that's all he asked. So to do those two things with the intention to make reparation to his heart for nine consecutive months. And there's 12 promises associated with that that Jesus gave St. Margaret Mary. And I'll go through them. Uh, the last one is, uh, of course, the best one. So first... I will give them all the graces necessary for their state in life. Maybe we can do another video where we break down what these promises mean um, and we can understand them a bit more, but we'll go through them. So second, I will establish peace in their homes. Third, I will comfort them in all their afflictions. Fourth, I will be their strength during their life and above all during death. That's another good one. Five, I will bestow a large blessing upon all their undertakings. Six, sinners shall find in my heart the source and the infinite ocean of mercy. Seven tepid souls shall become fervent. So tepidity uh, is lukewarmness. Lukewarm souls shall be fervent. And what that means is they're going to be on fire. They're going to grow in the zeal of the Lord. Fervent, eight, fervent souls, souls will quickly uh, mount to high perfection. Nine, I will bless every place where the image of my heart is set up and honored. And that's the image there. Um, ten, I will give to priests the gift of touching the most hardened hearts. 11. Those who shall propagate this devotion shall so have their names written in my heart, never to be blotted out. And number 12, the greatest, is I promise in the excess mercy of my heart that my all-powerful love will grant to all those who communicate on the first Friday of nine consecutive months the grace of final perseverance. They shall not die in my disgrace, nor without receiving the sacraments. My divine heart <clears throat> shall be their refuge in their last moment. What's amazing is that last promise is the graces of the sacraments before death. The grace that the Lord Jesus is going to be with you at the hour of your death. <clears throat> the grace of final perseverance. Now, if this devotion wasn't approved by the church, I'd be very sketchy. You know, how can, how can this devotion uh, attain such graces? But this is one of the things that has been approved by the church. It's not someone made it up. Uh, this is a very long-standing devotion that the saints practice themselves. Mm. So devotion to the heart of Jesus... Uh, is going to be is a lifelong devotion, of course, to turn to Jesus, the heart representing the center. So the sacred center of Jesus, the sacred heart of Jesus, the sacred being of Jesus. That's what the heart represents. The heart that's on fire to love men, that's heart that wants to give of itself, that's consumed with flames, but it's also hurt, the crown of thorns. People are ungrateful. Um, people are rejecting him. People are living in mortal sins. Uh, those who, souls who should know better are not doing it. That is religious souls. Uh, religious being, you know, monks and um, friars uh, and nuns, because those people are hold, held to a higher account. Because to him, more who is to he who's more is given, more is expected. So Jesus came to Margaret Mary and he asked her, you know, to make reparation. You know, again, just as just after the French Revolution in that period, where the whole um, range of atheism came, 
to Catholic French, France. France was a very Catholic country. King Louis, um, a lot of these kings who were the kings of France were saints. This was a very holy Catholic country uh, with a lot of devotion, but there was a massive exodus from the church, massive wave of atheism into the country. <coughs> so Jesus, uh, to combat that, appears to a very humble and lowly nun. St. Margaret Mary actually asked Jesus, you know, why did you choose me? He said, uh, I couldn't find anyone else more unworthy than you. Actual quote. She writes it in her book. She asked Jesus, why did you choose me? I think he said, I couldn't find anyone more miserable than you or more unworthy than you. It's one of those two. So he chose this humble nun, this random nun, right? Sort of like St. Festina. What's so special about St. Festina? She was just another nun. Or St. Bernadette. They used to laugh at her. Why you? They used to tease St. Bernadette. Uh, the same with St. Festina. Like, what's so special about you? You're not some, from some rich, powerful family. You're just a random nun, right? But God doesn't think like humans think. God wants to glorify His name. God wants to give glory to Him. So He chooses the lowly, the humble, and He does His work through them. To let everyone know, it's not that person, it's me working through them. So that's what He did with the same Margaret Mary. That's, I suppose that what's, that's what encapsulates the whole devotion of the Sacred Heart. Are we going to be humble? Like Margaret Mary, are we going to accept God's will for us? Um, and one of those things to accept God's will is to love Him. To the heart of Jesus' devotion is about loving him, making reparation, um, being there when everyone else is leaving him, when everyone's turning to the atheistic ways, as we know from the world, uh, we have a chance to do something for Jesus. Something small, but nonetheless something. And why wouldn't we? The promises of this devotion are so great. Um, for something so little as to go to Mass on the first Fridays, we, even if we say we're sick at home and we can't get to Mass, just to receive communion, to find a way to receive communion on the day and to go to confession. That's it. Go to confession, receive communion, make an act of love for the heart of Jesus, do it for Him. Nine consecutive months. And then what that will do after doing that devotion, when you practice that nine first Fridays of the month, after nine months, you already be in the habit. Go to Mass, uh, receive communion on a day that's not Sunday. See, a lot of people do the bare minimum, which is just Sunday. If that, if they even do the bare minimum. But the, through this devotion, you're going to get experience in doing more than just the bare, bare minimum. Go to Mass, Twice a week, some weeks. Great. Go to confession once a month. Have a routine. This is the minimum time I'm going to go without a confession. Once every month. Once a month is a good practice. For a lot of people who can't commit to once a week, even though that's what Padre Pia recommends, because he says, uh, even an empty room gathers dust. So he recommends to go to confession once a week. Just like an empty room can gather dust, you've got to clean it. Clean your soul every week. But at least at the minimum... Uh, well, the church, the minimum is once a year in the leniency that we've been given that we are obliged to go to confession. But as a minimum for those who are practicing the faith, once a month is a good minimum standard. Once every month, I'm going to set aside some time, spend this for the Lord and just go to confession. So that's one of the good things that devotion can help us to improve on. But we're going to be making another video where we're going to talk about the promises uh, in a bit more depth. So if you're interested, uh, stay tuned. Thank you. God bless.